Hi guys, how are you? Hope you are doing good. Stay safe and stay home. Stay healthy. Uh, today let us discuss about package practices of ground net. Before going to the topic and the discussion of package practices of the ground net, uh, if you are new to this channel, please like, share and subscribe to the channel and don't forget to click on the bell icon for the further notifications like uh, the package practices and growth stages of the crops. Before discussing about the package practices of the uh, ground net, let us see the importance, economic importance and uses like uh, uh, ground net. If you observe ground net is also known as peanut and in the normal language and it is an important oil, food and feed legume crop grown in overall 100 countries and it is, uh, it is also contributing to the nutrition of the farm families through consumption of energies and protein rich ground net kernels and provides the nutritious fodder to the livestock and uh, they can be uh, useful as the part of the weight loss diet and may reduce your risk of both heart diseases and gallstones these are the some of the uh, economic important points uh, now let us see about the package practices in the package practices these let us know about the soil if you see the soil which is suitable for the groundnut is uh, well drained and light textured loose friable sandy 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 and sandy loams which helps that which helps in easy penetration of the pegs and for the development of for the development and also for the harvesting stage if you see some of the uh, soils like uh, clay and heavy soils which are not suitable for this crop as they interfere in the penetration of the pegs and makes harvesting quite difficult if the crop the soil is like clay and heavy the penetration of the pegs is uh, there will be any difficulty in the penetration of the pegs pegs so that it uh, may affect the growth of the crop and ground net is sensitive to the soil salinity. We should take care that the ground net is sensitive to the soil salinity. So we should not grow, grow the crop in the soil saline uh, soils. Let us see about the uh, pH. What is the pH required for the uh, good yield of the ground net? And what is the uh, minerals required for that ground net? and it shows the ph range of ph range of 6 to 7.5 and with the minerals calcium and moderate amount of organic matter is also essential for the groundnut for the increase in the yield let us see about the field preparation field preparation we have some of the points you can observe that uh, you can observe the field preparation how it has to be done and although the ground net is a deep rooted crop as we know it is a deep rooted crop but it uh, it uh, but it is looking to uh, its underground pod forming habit there are two types like spreading type spreading type of the uh, ground nets also will be uh, here and branching type here you can see the field preparation should be with the deep plowing and uh, should be uh, avoided because it encourages the development of pots in the deeper layers and and uh, in the deeper layers and not the uh, it is uh, difficult for the harvesting of the crop adequate rains are the uh, are the sowing are necessary for the proper germination and the proper increase in the uh, fertility of the soil and the good plant growth and well distribution of rainfall during the crop periods ensures that there will be a good increase in the vegetative growth which is essential for the yield purposes and increased flowering and proper development of pots if the rainfall is adequate uh, so that it uh, develops the vegetative growth increased flowering rate and also the development of the parts and increase the crop yield it is necessary for the adequate rains or necessary for the good germination first one plowing with the soil turning plow followed by two harrowings would be 
uh, sufficient to achieve a good surface tilt. We should maintain the tilt at up to 12 to 18 centimeters of the soil for the field preparation. Seeds and sowing. How the seeds bowl and filled pots should be selected and swelled by using either a hand or power operator just before the sowing and from the shelled seeds small shriveled damaged broken seeds should be removed from the we should uh, separate the broken and damaged seeds from the bold and filled seeds and only the bold ones should be used for the sowing so that there will be a good growth of the vegetative vegetative purposes and let us see about the seed treatment. What is the seed treatment used for the ground net for the better improvement? If you see, if you observe that seed treatment which is used means the treat uh, treatment of the seeds with the thyram and mancozeb and carbon di or carbon dizem is recommended. Any of this are recommended. Therefore, the seed should be incubated, inoculated with the proper strain of the rhizobium culture. Uh, particularly in those fields where groundnut is to be grown first time and uh, there should be care taken where the groundnuts are sown in the first time and uh, seed treatment should be given for that groundnut seeds and seeds are treated with the quinol falls at 25 ec at the rate of 25 ml or chlorophyry falls and uh, for the control of white grubs and to break the seed dormancy of the spreading type varieties give the seed treatment of ethyl for the spreading type should, if you want to break the seed dormancy we should treat with the ethyl and let us see that sometimes the rodents and crows are noticed to take away from the uh, away the seed from the field so that the care, care should be taken that uh, uh, the use of repellents like penetrator and kerosene for the seed treatment are recommended to keep the intruders away from the away but the care should be taken to avoid any injury to the kernel and we we'll, let us see about the sowing sowing the ground net is uh, 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 can be sown uh, sowing is undertaken with the onset of monsoon and the irrigation facilities are available pre monsoon sowing should be done in the last week of may uh, where the adequate rains are sufficient at the may or are, uh, are in the first week of the june with pre sowing irrigation and which increase the yield of uh, by 46 percent as we see in the gujarat and the punjab and the shifting the sowing dates from the normal time of the first week of the july to the 20 june increases the pod yield of about 19 percent uh, early sowing helps in the best utilization there, uh, for the uh, sowing of the crop there should be an a particular time that is the first week of the June or the last week of the May it is the best time uh, for the sowing of the ground nets in the rabi crop it is sown from uh, September to December depending upon the wicket of the rice fields as we know the summer crop is sown at the last week of the January let us see about the sowing method. What is the sowing method used for the ground net? Here you can observe that seeds should be sown about the 5 cm deep with the help of country seed drill. Uh, and uh, the dibbling of the seed method can also be followed in the ground net. And dibbling of the seeds by keeping 60 cm distance in the row to row and 10 cm distance in the plant to plant for the spreading type. And uh, 45 into 45 to uh, 10 centimeters in bunch type helps in the saving the seed requirement and also for the increase in the yield as the sufficient space is required the bed uh, the major major important objective for the any crop or the uh, ground net is to increase the yield so that the precautions and the package practices should be taken for the increase in the yield uh, by any practices and this is some of the important package practices where uh, the crops are taken and the spacing of the ground net will be like in the spreading varieties like 60 into 10 centimeters and bunch type will be like 45 into 10 centimeters and if you see the selection of the seeds the selection of the seeds should be the quality seed should be taken and it should be given the prime importance for the 
growth and the optimum plant stand and the quality of the seeds is good the pots for the seed purposes should be stored and uh, a dry well ventilated place for the seed purposes pots should be shelled by hand one week before the sowing time uh, shelling should be done and hand shelling increases little damage to the seeds uh, so that the pots shell long before sowing time uh, before the sowing we should shell uh, by hand hand shelling and uh, you can use the bowl seeds for the sowing for the good uh, getting of the good uh, stand of the crop and if you see the seed rate what is the seed rate recommended for the uh, is uh, seed rate is always depending upon the spacing and type of the seeds as we know and the use of optimum seed rate is the key factor for the maintaining the recommended plant populations and in the spreading types we can see that 80 to 100 kg per hectare according to the size of the kernel and uh, 10 uh, and uh, it, sh it shows that GAUG 10 requires 80 kg kernels per hectare. Uh, here you can see this requires 100 kg kernels per hectare. And in the bunch type, if you notice, it is having the more seed rate and 100 to 125 kg per hectare according to the size of the kernels. Uh, if you observe the menus and fertilizers which are required for the groundnut or uh, some of the menus are well com well decomposed FIM is used and fertilizers like NPK also used for the basal applications and the pod formation and the development of the ground is the great influence by the fertilizer at the stages the fertilizer application will increase the yield and the lime application causes the better nodulation if the better nodulation occurs there will be a great uh, increase in the pod formation also and the minerals like uh, calcium and the uh, calcium is also another important mineral for the groundnut production calcium and groundnut has the unique characters of observing about 75 percent of the sulfur and calcium through gynophores and developing the pots through their gynophores they develop the they observe the 75 percent of the sulfur and also the calcium and, uh, and they develop the pots and if you see the irrigation, uh, groundnut is being a rainy season crop. It does not require any irrigation unless the dry spell period prolongs. And there will be no irrigation available if the if uh, the rains are having. If they have dry spells, it is necessary for the uh, if they have the dry spells at the critical stages like uh, flowering, peg formation, and development stages. It is critical for the irrigation the groundnut if you see that weeding and the intercultural operations of the groundnut will be like a critical period of the weed competition will be from 28 to 40 day 42 days after the sowing uh, there should be first weeding should be given at 28 to 42 days after the sowing without disturbing any germination process and the crop should be given uh, absolutely weed free up to 60 days after the sowing uh, by following two to three intercultural operations which is followed by the hand weeding but care should be taken so that uh, the soil should not disturb and also the germination process should not disturb and uh, not the uh, should not disturb the pig and uh, the pot formation and uh, hand weeding at 20 45 60 days after the sowing should uh, should be done to the crop and if you see the use of hormones, the application of plantofix and vardak at the time of flowering have been found to reduce the excess of vegetative growth and flowering period and which increases the uh, number of effective parts, number of effective parts, the test weight and the yield. If you observe uh, the most ideal time for hormonal application in the ground net is uh, 40 to uh, 40 to 80 days after the sowing best uh, concentration is 20 p if you notice what are the symptoms for the harvesting or like uh, some of the prominent symptoms of maturity or yellowing of the foliage and the spotting of the leaves spotting of the leaves and dropping of the old leaves these are the prominent symptoms where we should do the harvesting of the groundnut the parts is uh, mature when it becomes hard and tough and when there is dark tinge on the inner side of the 
cells. So harvesting before the maturity lowers the yield due to shrinkage of the seeds when they are dry. So the harvesting stage should be the prominent stage and uh, the care should be taken when we should do exactly at exactly when they mature we should do we should not delay in the harvesting because they can germinate in the soil uh, in the soil and uh, there will be a decrease in the pots and uh, the spreading type more pots remains in the soil due to broken of the roots and which reduce the yield and increase the labor cost so the care should be taken that uh, the you should not delay in let us see how the drying and the storage of the pots will be happen in the ground nets. And the pots for the storage must contain 9% for the pots and kernel 8%. This is the constant mo moisture content they should maintain in the pots. And if you uh, if you maintain higher than the 8% in the kernels, it will produce the aflatoxin which causes harmful uh, liver cancer of the body and uh, decreases the health and uh, there will be the yield of uh, yield in the different uh, types like uh, there will be a different yield in different types like spreading type and the bunchy type for this spreading type there will be 1500 to 2000 kg per hectare and uh, for the bunch type 1000 to 1500 kg per hectare uh, the ratio if you observe the ratio of the kernels to the parts uh, it will maintain at uh, 72 uh, 70 is to 30 uh, ratio percentage this is the package practices of the ground net if you like this video please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell icon